How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another video. Listen, if this is your first time here, my name is David Clark. This is my old sled, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about gear. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the gear that I've been wearing up to now, some of the things I don't like about it, and then I'm going to show you the brand new set of gear I just got from 509 that I'll be wearing next season. So stick around. Wow, 2020 has been a great year so far, hasn't it? You know what? Uh, last season ended kind of abruptly for me. You know, it wasn't the best year anyway. Like we had a lot of days where we had a fair bit of snow, but then we had a lot of days where it warmed up and melted uh, where I was. And I actually planned to do a lot more riding stuff last year. And I did get out and shot a little bit of riding video, but, uh, you know, then again, on the days that I was free to get out there, ride and shoot the rest of that video, you know, those happened to be the days when it warmed up and it rained. So hopefully we'll get a lot more in this year. Now I'm going to reshoot a couple of scenes for this video this year, but I actually shot most of it at the end of last season. Uh, so if you're in Ontario, you know, they closed a lot of our trails early uh, when the pandemic started. But, you know, it didn't make that much difference for me. Like I said, the weather wasn't that great. Most of our snow was gone anyway. Now, I don't want to talk about COVID too much because, like, every time you turn the TV or the radio on, all it is is COVID numbers and COVID restrictions. And uh, I think everybody's probably getting worn out. But um, one thing that might impact our sport, I think we may see a lot of new snowmobilers this year. I think because we can't travel, I mean, I had a couple of trips booked this year. I was supposed to go to Texas in the summer. Uh, we were supposed to go to Florida in the fall. And you can just can't travel. So I think a lot of people are probably looking for things to do closer to home. So I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of new snowmobilers. So if you're just buying your first sled or you're getting uh, back into snowmobiling again, this might be a good channel for you. I do a lot of sort of basic tips, tricks, how-to videos. Uh, so take a second, subscribe to the channel, click that little bell icon. You'll get notified whenever I post a new video. So in terms of the gear that I've been wearing, so where I ride, it gets pretty cold in the winter and I mostly trail ride. So I'm not exerting myself as much as like a backcountry rider or a, or a mountain rider would. Um, so I want stuff that's pretty warm and pretty water repellent. So this, so the bibs that I wear, these are a snow gear brand. They're fairly inexpensive uh, bib. They're a polyester shell. The one complaint I have with these, they are warm enough and they're fairly water repellent, but they're really stiff. Uh, likewise with the jackets, I have a couple of, of uh, BRP branded or Skidoo branded jackets. Um, and these are a nylon shell as well. They're, they're warm, uh, but they're stiff. So I don't know if you've ever seen Christmas story where, where, uh, Ralphie's brother puts all of his snow gear on. He's like, I can't put my arms down. That's kind of what I feel like in this stuff. It's really stiff when I'm all suited up. You know what? For the most part, I've been happy with these jackets. If I have one complaint on them, it's the zippers. So they're, they're kind of designed to have like a rubber pull on a string. They're meant to be easy to grab with a, a glove, but I do find these break all the time. Like the string will pull out of the rubber piece or break off of here. So I've actually fixed these zippers a few times. In terms of helmets, there's two that I wear. Uh, so the one that I have is the BV2S. I wear that on a really cold day. It's a pretty bulky, heavy helmet, I find. Um, and I much prefer the modular design of this one. So this is a really old first generation modular helmet. This is actually my favorite. The one downside with this helmet, it doesn't have a heated shield. So my gear's getting a couple of years old now. It's uh, time to look for something new. Um, one of the things I was thinking about was in terms of brand. So I'm a Skidoo guy, right? And it's just a personal thing, right? I'm not knocking anybody else. If you've got a Polaris or an Articat, Yamaha, they all make good sleds, right? Um, but I thought I'm going to look at some other brands of gear, not just Skidoo. I think some of these companies like CKX and 509 that just focus on snowmobile gear, they make some pretty nice stuff too. And the other thing I was thinking was just in terms of the channel, because a lot of you guys that watch don't necessarily have Skidoo. So I thought it might be kind of cool to have something a little bit different. So I reached out to a couple of uh, gear manufacturers in the fall with a few questions and 509 was nice enough to send me some of their 2020 gear to try out. So let's have a look at it. All right. So this is the outerwear. Let's have a look at this. What do we got? That looks like the jacket. So we'll start with the, the bibs. So this is the 2020 range jacket and bibs. So 509 makes gear for a lot of different outdoor sports, um, including obviously snowmobile. Uh, and under the snowmobile umbrella, they make a couple of different brands, right? For different types of riding. All right, so in terms of design, I really like the look of this bib. Um, I was kind of holding my breath that they didn't send me something that was like aqua and fuchsia. Uh, so yeah, this is a nice color scheme. So we got black and gray. 
the material. So this is something that they call five tech. So it's really waterproof, but I can tell just feeling this, that this is a lot softer than that um, nylon and polyester material that my other gear is made out of. And all of the seams are moisture taped. So it's obviously going to be pretty uh, weatherproof. Again, in terms of uh, wearability, you know, you've got kind of elastic under the armpit. That's going to be nice. I think that'll be comfortable. We've got a zippered pocket here at the hip. And these are waterproof zippers. The zippers themselves are a lot more solid than the gear I've been using. Pockets here. And then we've got a pocket up in the chest. And then we've got the gaiters at the bottom to keep the snow out. And we've got a full zipper up the side to access your boots. Actually, I guess if you zip it right up, you can access whatever it is you want to access. <laughs> no judgment there. So yeah, in terms of design, I think that's a really nice looking set of bibs. That black and gray looks good. Uh, the yellow is not quite my yellow, but we can forgive them for that. Uh, I think that's reflective too, actually. Uh, even the, the buckle design is cool. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that. But yeah, that's a really nice looking uh, set of bibs. And obviously, again, it's a lot more flexible. Um, we'll have to try this on in a minute, but uh, I have a feeling this is going to be a lot more comfortable than the bibs I've been wearing. All right, let's have a look at this jacket. So yeah, there again, that is a nice looking jacket. Now, typically you think of snowmobiling as being something cold, but you do get days where it's warmer out and you're exerting and you get hot. So I noticed there's a zippered area down the side of this jacket on each side with a kind of a mesh inside so you can let some air flow through. That's cool. Up here you got like a magnetic clasp for the neck. I actually kind of like that over the Velcro that you usually see. All right, so inside we've got a couple of zippered pockets. If we look at the bottom, we've got the typical powder skirt and we've got a drawstring to pull the waist in tight and we have the D-ring for your tether. Yeah, and on this side we've got uh, Again, a zippered pocket here with a little opening for your headphone. The one thing I did notice actually is a huge advantage with those magnetic clasps over these Velcro ones is the Velcro ones actually chew up your fabric. Um, and you know, the other thing, I hang this jacket over the chair in the kitchen and the number of times my wife has complained to me because she catches her clothes on the Velcro of my jacket. Yeah, so I'm liking the fit of this so far. So I used the uh, the sizing chart on their website. Actually, it's pretty good. Uh, it fits me just about right. I don't have a lot of extra length in the leg or anything. The pockets are a good height. Yeah, so I'm liking the fit on this jacket as well. So again, we've got the little snow skirt or powder skirt on the bottom. Ooh, that's going to be nice. So you got an adjustable cuff. I like the, the cut on that's tapered. Oh, and you've got like a, a gaiter, so it's like a, I guess like a spandex material, so it's super thin. So it would keep the snow from getting up in your arms, but uh, it's thin enough that you'd be able to wear that under your glove. That is a nice fitting jacket. I like that. Zippers are easy to access. Now, the other feature I really like about this jacket is the neck. So, on my skidoo jackets as well, you can zip them right up. Um, like, if you've got a really windy day and you want to block the wind out. So, there's that magnetic closure again there. I rarely zip them right up because it's really uncomfortable. It's bulky. But with this jacket, it's not. Part of it, I think, is the cut of the neck. Uh, and part of it's the material inside. It's a really soft, like a lycra material. Um, and that's really comfortable to have zipped right up like that. Now, let's have a look at the helmet. This has been the hardest thing to leave in the box. So they also sent me a Delta R4 modular. Thank you, 509. Let's have a look at this. So I think I'm going to do a full review of this helmet as a separate video, but let's have a quick look at it anyway. Oh, look at this. Even the box is cool. So yeah, one of the things actually I was kind of thinking about was getting... Um, uh, a snow cross style helmet rather than the, the trail helmets that I use. Uh, this one's kind of neat because it's sort of a crossover. It's a modular helmet with a full face shield, but it's got sort of snow cross styling. Oh, look at that. 
All right, guys, so just a quick look at this helmet. It has a ton of features. So I'm going to do this helmet just as a video on its own. We'll do a full review of this. But I can tell you right now, this is a sick-looking helmet. Obviously, it's got a lot of features. It has that nice snow cross look to it, but it's a modular helmet, uh, which I really like. I love that modular design. Uh, integrated glare shield. It's an electric uh, heated shield, so that's going to be really nice. And I absolutely love that flat black. Even the 509 logo, the way they've done it, looks really cool. So we'll do another full review just of this helmet. Now, in terms of value, I'll check in again a little bit later in the season after I've had a chance to ride with it and see how it holds up. Um, you know, in terms of price, brand new in 2020, it retailed for 360 US, give or take. I've seen it from, I've seen it on sale this year for 250 US, and I've seen it up as high as 400, but it's kind of typically in the $300 range. Now, that may seem expensive, but again, you got to remember that that this is a piece of sort of purpose-built snowmobile gear, as opposed to an item of apparel. Good snowmobile gear is going to cost you a few bucks, but, you know, I think it's worth it. One of the things that I love about snowmobiling is that when all my friends and neighbors are kind of whining about the cold and begging for spring to come and hunkering down, I'm like, bring it on, and I'll go out and I'll snowmobile for hours and I'm completely comfortable. And that's because I spent a little bit of time and money on getting decent snowmobile gear. So I'm going to be warm and I'm going to be dry when I'm out there. But I can tell you right now, I love this gear. So in terms of comfort, the cut, the fit, um, I'm really liking this gear. It's so much easier to move in. It feels good on. Uh, the material, like I said, is a lot more flexible than what I've been using. So if you're looking for a set of gear for this winter, I really recommend you check out 509. I'll put a link to their website in the description for this video. Obviously, a real focus on innovation and technology and the design of their gear. Uh, really good warranties. Outerwear, I think, is warranted for a year. Uh, and the visors on helmets has like a lifetime guarantee. Um, really good company. A lot of different products for different riding styles. So definitely a company you want to check out. All right, guys, as always, love to hear from you as well. So tell me, what kind of gear do you ride with? Why did you choose it? What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? Uh, do you have any 509 gear? What do you think so far? Okay, so I think that's it for this video. Until next time, I'm David Clark. Thanks for taking the time to watch. So if you're just getting into your... So if you're doing research, what kind of gear do you ride with? Why did you choose it? What do you like about it? What don't you like about it?